the Western Cape Liquor Authority, to all those members of the community that is logged in on social media and on our YouTube channels. Please feel welcomed. This is a standing committee meeting for community safety, and we are here to deliberate and discuss on vote number four. Uh, vote number four. Without any further ado, I am going to allow members to introduce themselves for the record. <coughs> Chairperson, good afternoon. Uh, Fulton Chris is a member of this committee. Good afternoon, okay. Chair Department, Lorraine Boita. Good afternoon, Chairperson and colleagues, Gillian Bosman. Thank you so much. With us, we also have our capable procedural officer, Mr. Wasim Matthews, as well as our assistant procedural officer, Mary Ann Burgess. I have received one apology from member Malikaya Keiko from the EFF. However, I have not noted any additional um, absentees that were listed with us here today. Wasim Matthews, uh, did we receive any other apologies? Good afternoon, Chairperson and all guests. Uh, there have been no further apologies rendered, sir. Thank you so much. Members, in terms of the process moving forward, um, we are all aware of the rules of engagement, which was atc on the 17th of April 2020. I will now allow the department and the minister to introduce themselves. Minister, first over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I'm the um, Provincial Minister for Community Safety in the Western Cape, and I'll hand over to my HND. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Honourable Chair and uh, members. Um, Yashina Pillay, Head of Department for Community Safety. I am going to ask uh, the uh, team to introduce themselves, to please put their cameras on and introduce themselves. I will start then uh, with the Chief Director Management Support, Ms. Lindy Governor, um, the other Chief Directors, and then thereafter the CFO and his team. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chairperson, members. Uh, my name is Lindy Governor. I'm the Chief Director of Management Support in Community Safety. Hi, um, good afternoon, members um, and Minister HUD. I'm David Kutsi. I'm the Chief Director for um, Secretariat Safety and Security. Thank you. Good afternoon, members. Uh, Fred Watkins, Department of Community Safety. I'm the Acting Chief Director of Security Risk Management. Thank you. CFO. OK, yeah. Chair, I don't see this, um, the CFO connected. Um, okay, he is connected, um, CFO. Uh, yes, thank you, H. Apologies, Chair. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, HOD. Um, should any particular question um, be directed um, based on the vote today, um, you are more than welcome to direct um, those or um, questions to any of the officials, um, should you deem um, that is a requirement from your side or from the minister's side. Members, we do know that we are here for an hour in terms of our community safety um, vote number four in the schedule of the Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill 2021. I'm going to go straight into it and table the vote at this stage and refer members to pages 55, to 60. Pages 55 to 60. Is there any member that would want to ask any questions specific to pages 55 to 60? Oh, members, please forgive me. I see no hands. Minister? I am rushing at my side. It's that time of the year, so I trust that you will forgive me. Uh, is there any introductory comments from you, sir? Uh, I just wanted to um, uh, very 
just wanted to very briefly say that um, our main prioritization, reprioritization of funding, uh, as you will see in the explanation from most of our officials, mainly impacted via the you know, impact of COVID. But what we have also seen, we have seen some amazing success stories in the crime stats within the metro, and specifically the murder um, hotspot areas. And what we have seen was a kind of a displacement of crime to some of our rural areas. And in that regard, we have now reprioritized quite a, a bit to some of the rural areas, specifically a, a K-9 unit for the Overstrand and a reaction unit for the Overstrand. So I just want to speak about that principle. Uh, but then I think you very correct. Let's get on to the actual, the meat of, of, of the adjustment budget. Thanks very much, Chairperson. Thank you so much, Minister. HOD, is there any comments from you at this time? I don't want to take up your time, uh, Honorable Chair, but if I could just make some opening remarks. Um, before the sitting, I've reflected on, on uh, some of our achievements to date. And I think uh, from our side, um, we believe that the department has made tremendous inroads towards being a service delivery orientated department. To that end, we've achieved, uh, and amongst others, the following established area-based teams in 16 areas across the province with a focus on our uh, murder stations within the Cape Town Metropole. We are working with uh, both government um, and municipal uh, stakeholders, but most importantly, engaging uh, with the local communities uh, for us to bring together law enforcement, violence prevention, and urban design interventions. Um, we've also rolled out more than 1,000 safety ambassadors to support the violence prevention interventions in the province. We've established and supported the canine units, as uh, Minister has said, uh, in the Overstrand municipality, the city of Cape Town, and the Swatland municipality. We are also supporting um, the Rural Safety Initiative together with the Department of Agriculture, supporting the farm watchers, our neighborhood watch accredited, accredited structures as well. And then we are in the process of establishing a safety and security network um, across the province. So there is a link of IT technology, et cetera, from the city of Cape Town to the central Karoo, for example. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, HOD. Uh, members, I can also confirm I've not visited any premises to which a permit was issued from the Liquor Authority, but I do note that the CEO is here as well. Is there any remarks from the CEO at this time? Uh, Chair, chairperson, thank you and uh, good afternoon to all the members. Uh, just to acknowledge, we have our chairperson of the board of the Western Cape Liquor Authority also present here today and with me is the CFO, Mr. Santiso Kuaba, uh, also in attendance. Um, chairperson, just uh, if you will allow me, yes, certainly we are quite eager to participate, of course, in the in the safety plan and uh, of the Western Cape government. We are supporting uh, a very close strategic alignment with that. And in relation to the adjustment process, we are keen to increase the number, our, our footprint in terms of the activities of our inspectors to ensure that all liquor outlets that you may be visiting over the next few months will be inspected. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Members, on that note, it is now 15.24. I will table the vote number four, commencing from pages 55 to 60. <clears throat> pages 55 to 60, I see one hand. Member Christians. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, and. Um, Thank you, Chairperson. Just a couple of questions. Um, the one, I know that uh, when the HOD um, took over a responsibility of, to be HOD of department, I know that the reprioritization of the, um, the department was so important and she explained all about that. Uh, the question is, I, I just see there's a massive underspending and I know 
most of the underspending is because of you know jobs not being filled. Um, uh, so, so the, the 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 one concern is just the underspending that I think needs to be addressed. That's number one. Number two, um, the the K nine units, and I know we have K nine K nine units on the major roads coming into uh, the province, the N seven and Swatland there and Overstrand. Um, are are we? Are, is the department looking at? Um, uh, bolstering the K9 uh, uh, unit because of, uh, I know in the Overstrand area, I've mentioned it before, there's many, many problems. And I, uh, when I drove there, uh, you know, I see the pull of cars with the, the illegal poaching and, and, and drugs and so on. So I just wanted to know uh, about that. And then maybe just um, uh, to, uh, to ask uh, maybe, uh, the minister is uh, with all these interventions. Are we? Are we? You know, and um, I'm I'm very much worried about um, the festive season now, and um, that's why I'm talking about uh, the, the 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 because it was also underspending in the safety ambassadors and so on. So I just want to know, you know, um, also. Um, I think it's a Christ Crystalis Academy uh, that there was under uh, underspending. Uh, if with well, the festive season now at hand, um, you know, um, I just want to know that, you know, I, I know these plans and I know these safety plans. The, the HD spoke about that. My concern is with uh, could we not use the money with underspending and roll out, you know, more more programs as to have this massive reduction uh, in, in, in not spending our money, uh, the department's money. Maybe uh, also just the the very important question is that um, I don't know. You know, we we the, the HOD spoke about um, um, the area based teams and and uh, the murder stations. I, I don't I don't know um, if we are uh, we're not on the ground and we don't have the statistics. But I, I don't know if it if it if it does make a difference on on, on uh, in in the townships. That's still so violent and, and, and so on. So uh, I'm, I'm happy for the areas based teams and, and, and so on. But is it is it really making a difference? And are we and just a question, are we heading towards reducing? And, and I'm speaking specifically because we're going to the spirit. Are we reducing the murder rate as uh, was promised, you know, um, uh, with all these interventions that we have? And now that we have area-based teams and, and and so on, so so I, I know it's just broad, but I'm the, the questions is quite clear. The underspending, uh, the crystallis, um, the K9 unit, and uh, the areas-based team is is it making a difference with when it comes to the uh, murder stations? Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Member Christians. Members, I am partly covered by questions, uh, by the remarks made um, earlier by the Minister and the HOD, um, and questions from member Christians. I'm just wanting to latch on to page 58. Um, are we able to get some details in terms of the less funds which was required um, for neighbourhood watch um, transfers? But then I'm covered by the Youth um, Safety Ambassador's question from member Christians. Um, that will be the first round for now, Minister and HOD. Thank you. Thanks, Chair Chairperson. If I may just start, um, I think the first point I need to make for the understand at Chrysalis, there's just an absolute a reality with COVID that you cannot take on the numbers that we previously did. We have to, they had to halve the numbers, and just purely because of spacing and um, social distancing. And X amount, you can't have crowds in uh, academies. So I want to say thank you to um, Honourable Christians for the question. But I, I, the underspend is mainly because of COVID protocols that's been implemented strictly so that we don't have super spread um, events in our own facilities. And I, I think that I'll ask the HOD also to speak further about this. Then I, at, at the point around the um, the the uh, the K9 units, uh, yes, wherever we are able to establish K9 units, uh, we saw how Overstand was ready for us. So we immediately moved into the Overstand to assist with the establishment and now also with the reaction unit 
because we have seen that the road being blocked, um, you know, the M2 being blocked. And I think it's uh, honorable Christians have asked, what are we doing to stop that? The road being blocked in that specific area and, and, and you know, in the overstrand, but also the overburg, the stigma municipality that covers that whole area. We have also, we very, I'm very proud to announce and to say that we've actually expanded there's a new unit enhanced by off safety ambassadors. And remember in the in the Overburg district, the safety ambassadors are based at police stations and in the municipality. And they form um, a force multipliers. So they're columns, columns of 20 columns of, of various columns all the time that's that's been executed. And, and so I'm very proud to say I think it's in fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's on the 15th that we're going to launch that new unit uh, there. So uh, what I'm trying to say is we are continuously continue to spend um, our, our money on and our priority for me is safety. And I'm going to, and you know, honorable members, I'm, I can say to you now, I've, we've sat through an MTEC, uh, you know, where um, Treasury said, no, there's just no money for safety ambassadors. We're going to fight to get young people the opportunity to be part of a program of this government and to give them some dignity and absolute human dignity uh, you know, and to make sure that we don't just send them into the very, very areas that we are seeing crime, uh, you know, being driven by these youngsters. And then, of course, Mr. Honorable Christians, if you have looked at the last quarter's um, um, crime statistics, there was an absolute reduction in murder. For the first, we're the only province that had a reduction in murder and in crime in general. And specifically in those hotspot areas that you refer to, so we would like to. I believe, of course, we we are, are, you know the clever people are busy doing an analysis of it, but we would really like to believe that is our our approach to our safety plan, our approach not only to law enforcement but also to the um, area-based team component, the, the crime prevention component that deals with the the, the origins of crime, the or why crime. Is taking place in particular areas. Um, so I'm, I'm, I would like to just also hand over to my HD to perhaps expand a bit further. But I want to say that the area based teams, I see many municipalities are now asking for that because, uh, you know, it's where all the different stakeholders are meeting together, where they're really speaking. And then I'll speak much more in my debate tomorrow around some of those issues um, in the formal detail. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Chair. I, I will expand a bit and ask any of the other team members if they would like to come in as well, including the CFO. Um, in terms of the underspend of the department, it was the underspend is mainly due um, to the um, implementation of the LEAP program um, that was not implemented as per um, sh uh, schedule. And uh, the main reason for this is uh, due to the pandemic. Um, as uh, one would know, during a certain lockdown periods um, and uh, when the disaster management uh, regulations came into effect, uh, the uh, LEAP officers could not be trained as planned because the training colleges or the training institute, uh, training college, um, the Metro Police Training College that trains the LEAP officers could not operate as per normal. And this resulted in the entire program then not being rolled out as planned by July 2021, and it had to be pushed to where the, the total number will then uh, be deployed uh, during the month of December. And uh, the fact that we could not train the LEAP officials timelessly meant that the other processes, um, there was a ripple effect in terms of then um, acquiring of uh, uh, the procurement processes of firearms, pepper spray, et cetera, which would have been uh, vehicles included, which would then have been the resources assigned or allocated to those specific uh, LEAP officers. Because the training was delayed, then the procurement processes was were also delayed to actually align with the appointment at de and deployment of the LEAP officers. So that's the uh, first. The uh, second is uh, definitely, uh, Member Christians, in terms um, of the K-9 reaction unit or the K-9 unit uh, in the Overstrand area, um, we also came to the same 
same conclusion that uh, more resources were required and therefore we are establishing a reaction unit in the Overs within the Overstrand local municipality in partnership uh, with them um, that will come into effect uh, shortly as well. The reaction unit will be similar to the uh, response unit of the LEAP offices at this time, which is a uh, revol uh, rotational, revolving um, um, LEAP officer deployment. So should there be a spike uh, in um, incidents, uh, well, when we talk about the city and LEAP, it is in murders. We have deployed our reaction unit to Gugoleta, to Umfoleni, et cetera. So this reaction unit will be based in the Overstrand uh, area. And it is... Um, a reaction unit that we're piloting in a district or local municipal space to see if we can achieve the same outcomes as we have achieved with the LEAP program. Um, similar to uh, what uh, Minister has already said with the Chrysalis Academy, unfortunately, the Chrysalis Academy had to reduce their numbers drastically uh, to adhere to COVID protocols. And because of that, uh, they were unable to also spend their full budgetary uh, complement. Um, ministers also alluded to the fact of uh, the crime stats, uh, we being the only province where there was a decrease in the murder rate, and the decrease in the murder rate is aligned uh, to our uh, the integrated planning that this department coordinates together with the SAPs, the city and other law enforcement agencies, and also due to the additional LEAP offices in these areas. And this has been also um, um, mentioned or, or affirmed by the uh, provincial commissioner of the province. We've had a different approach to law enforcement um, in this province where all the agencies are working together and the Department of Community Safety is coordinating uh, these initiatives. And then in terms of the funds to the neighborhood watches and the colleagues can advise if I'm uh, uh, wrong, is uh, during um, the other waves of COVID, we had special COVID projects that the neighborhood watches undertook, and we then paid them a stipend uh, to, uh, for uh, those special projects, which ended. Um, the uh, funding and support to the neighborhood watch structures, however, continue as we have always done. So this is was just a special allocation uh, for that. Uh, colleagues, if anyone else would, um, CFO and the other colleagues would like to supplement anything I've said, please feel free to do so. Thank you, Chair. Uh, nothing from my side, HOD. Thank you. I think you've covered everything sufficiently. Thank you so much, Minister and HOD. I see mem member Christians. Is that a follow up question that you have? <clears throat> yes, Chairperson. <clears throat> Just give me one moment. I'm trying to open up to see there is another hand. Member Bota. Member Bota? Is it a question specific to the first pages that were tabled? Chair, to follow up on the response. Perfect. Um, uh, member Christians, I will allow Member Bota, and then you are then um, directly after Member Bota on this particular part. Thank you. Chair. Thank you, Chair. I'm just checking with the department in regard to the decreased numbers of intake um, in regard to chrysalis. Um, what was that decrease in number, in numerical number, and did it have a, um, was a decrease in terms of the um, province applications, and did it have a negative effect on the applicants from specific rural Western Cape? Thanks. Thank you, Member Bota. Member Christians? Thank you, Chair. Just a follow up on the Neighborhood Watch. Um, I know that the Neighborhood Watch, um, uh, like the HOD said, gets funding when there's special projects. But otherwise, um, you know, and, uh, and these are, are people that, uh, I always say it, they risk their lives to make sure the communities are safe because they're on the ground. Um, just the question, uh, you know, I've, I've spoken about this for a long time, 
Um, and I don't know if the department has uh, looked into this, giving at least uh, when I spoke to the neighborhood watch, uh, I spoke about it a couple of times now, a life cover when they're on duty, or even if the, if a life cover doesn't work, a funeral cover if they if they on duty and they are killed. I don't know um, if the department, I've mentioned it now, This I think this is the third or fourth time I mention it. And then the other other thing is that not all, you know, m most of our neighborhood watches, are, and, and I'm specifically talking about your crime infested areas, your uh, disadvantaged communities where it's really rough and tough. And those people, most of them uh, don't have jobs and, you know, they don't get a stipend uh, when when they work and they risk their lives. Is there any um, uh, is there any indication? I know some of them do get. When I was in Mitchell's plane, they said to me, out of the fifty in that one area, ten get it. Uh, I don't know was it because of the special projects. When I was in Mannenberg, they told me exact exactly the same. They just wait on the next project in order to have uh, this. But uh, my point is. Um, that this is not sustainable if people wait for the next project to get a stipend. Is there somehow in those areas where people really put their lives at risk and really want a safer communities uh, to assist them with a life cover, uh, the, a, a life cover or, or, or those type of things and, and stipends? Because like I said, you know, the same with a, with a walking bus. When people get paid at the walking bus, they run over to the walking bus with those money is there because people is hard, hard for money because and it's understandable because it puts bread on the table. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank, thank you so much, Member Christians. Members, um, with that set of questions, I am going to close the initial pages that I've tabled. Um, I will now hand over to the department. Uh, thank you very much, Honourable Chairperson. I'm going to ask the colleagues to supplement. So uh, the question um, in relation to Chrysalis, I'm going to ask Director Trevor Wingrove to come in on that um, uh, in terms of uh, the actual numbers, if he has it um, at his disposal. In terms of the neighbourhood watches, um, Honourable Chair and Honourable Member Christians, we have done um, extensive research uh, into this. Um, in terms of whether we could uh, possibly pay a stipend or any sort of cover. We've also um, engaged extensively with our legal services in that regard. And I'm going to ask uh, Chief Director David Kutsia to come in with some of that um, insight. We do, upon accreditation, um, pay uh, an amount of 10000 uh, to the neighborhood watch structure, and that um, continues. Uh, David, if I could please ask you to shed some light on the neighborhood watch um, uh, payments, as Member Christians has alluded to, and then Trevor, if you can please come in in relation to the chrysalis question. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, thank you, Chair um, and Members. Um, so with regard to the neighborhood watch um, insurance or life cover, um, we've done quite a lot of um, um, feedback or looked at that issue. Um, so what our legal services advised that it would be better for us that a neighbor watch directly insure and look at their own members because we had discussions with Momentum and Discovery and then some of the bigger insurance companies and to them, it's a liability of the individual member that's the issue. So they indicated that um, if one would, you could then have a cap or a limit, um, but then it would be better that each um, neighborhood watch then actually insure, look at their own insurance for their members because they've got a name or they know the individual member. What we are looking at at provincial level is like um, when we look at the professionalization of neighborhood watches, is then to look at like an auxiliary neighborhood watch officer or a reserve officer and then um, in that model because the person is known and we can do a risk assessment on the person we are then looking at um, providing some type of insurance when they are physically deployed but that's not part of the um, new model we're looking at at professionalization and building a safety network um, so the minister has asked us to look into that as a possibility. So we are still busy with um, those um, finer details of how we can then action that type of insurance for auxiliary 
or reservist neighborhood watch member. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Before Trevor comes in, uh, when uh, our legal services has um, then, as I indicated, informed us that it is not a route we can go um, that, uh, that as government for us to pay an insurance, etc. And when we did uh, the calculations of what it would cost, um, the amount that it would require would be a very substantial amount considering the number of neighborhood watches in the province. So even if we could do it as a department, we would not be able to afford it considering our limited uh, budget that we have available, which would mean that we would not be able to provide that 10,000 or pay for projects or anything of the like. And it, and we, we would, uh, in terms of our mandate and what we have to deliver on our APPs, which would mean that we would not be able to deliver on our APPs if we were paying um, each individual member and insurance uh, in terms of uh, the work that they uh, would be performing. Um, Chair, I'm going to hand over to Director Trevor Wingrove to answer the question on Chrysalis. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, HOD, honorable members. Um, in For this financial year, we have already trained 355 um, youth at the Chrysalis Academy, and there's one cohort still left, which will start in January. Um, at this stage, I, I won't have the exact figure for the for the last cohort, but if I look back over the last year, it is on average about 125 to 130 graduates. Um, so we're looking at around about 480 um, youth for this financial year, which is um, quite an improvement of the previous financial year 2020-21, which was 320. And um, I can confirm that all of them have been placed in a work opportunity. We have 100% placements of all youth in, in work opportunities. And we still recruit, um, even though Chrysalis, they do their own recruitment, of course, but the focus is still under rural areas. I unfortunately don't have that breakdown in terms of the areas with me now, but um, yes, uh, definitely um, youth from the rural areas um, who are still recruited for the Chrysalis program. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you so much to the department. Members, we will now proceed with the last <coughs> set of, of pages before the annexures, which is 61 to 67. Is there any questions for 61 to 67? I will table 61 to 67 as well as the annexures. <clears throat> Thank you, members. The entire vote has now been tabled. Any final question, point of clarity? I see no hands my side. I see Jay. one hand going up. Um, sure. There, I, I hear you, Member Christians. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Chair. No, no, I just want to say thank you for the department uh, uh, and the Minister for the research they've done on uh, the insurance and that. I'm not going to belabor the point. Um, just one question, maybe. Um, if we talk about uh, auxiliary uh, officers and we talk or, or reserve officers, uh, does it mean that everybody's going to be reserve officers, auxiliary workers, and then um, there will be some sort of coverage. And what happens to a neighborhood watch member now that don't have, that dies on duty and does not have the funds, uh, you know, to, to have a funeral? Is there is there remedies for that? Uh, I'm thankful for that. I just, um, I'm thankful for the work they've done on this and with um, the legal department. I just, wanted those two questions maybe just for clarity's sake. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Member Christians. And if I'm able to latch on, um, I do appreciate Member Christians having raised um, the particular matter a number of times. I wanted to double check HOD and Minister. Um, has there been any engagement um, 
in this regard um, with the city of Cape Town or any other municipality um, that also plays a role in helping and supporting um, neighborhood watches? Was this ever a topic in those engagements with municipalities? Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Um, I'm also going to give back to my HD and the team, but I want to say that the city is very, very vigorously um, also investigating the possibility of um, that insurance type of um, policy. Um, and I think we will continue to also uh, be part of that kind of investigation of the city. Um, and I'm, I'm, I also want to say to member Christians, um, yes, I'm also very grateful for the work that our team did um, in this regard. I think the one point we need to make is that, um, in fact, we had, a, we had about three, in my time now, yeah, about three natural deaths with, where neighborhood watch members passed away of natural causes. And the department was the first in line to assist uh, whatever way, uh, be it, you know, just morally, just, but I, I think in one case they needed um, a bit of, of funds you know, doesn't much. So, so I think a donation was made from my, from my budget. But the point I think, um, as Member Christian says, that we need to, again, also afford our, our those are hardworking, uh, poor people um, that generally have almost nothing, and they find the time to come and patrol um, on a daily basis um, the streets. Um, but I think, as my HD indicated, um, you know. Uh, uh, we we have found that the, the stipend given to walking buses created quite a lot of problems uh, because, as you indicated, um, honourable Christians, so only a few people got that stipend. They had they now had this um, stipend, and then there are lots of accusations. They have a it's caused they have a, and it's only in the city where it happens. So in all other parts, specifically our rural parts, uh, people are saying. You know, why is the city uh, giving um, um, people some stipend and we're not getting? But I also think we need to also examine the issue of volunteerism. You know, and I know it's easy for people, for us to get the income. But um, I think that, that that spirit of volunteering, I think one must always just continue to foster, um, you know, and many people, even if they have nothing, they still continue to volunteer. I'm going to hand over to HUD and the team. Thanks, um, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Minister. Um, so in terms of uh, what uh, Chief Director David Kutia has, has mentioned in terms of the auxiliary workers, etc., it is something we're still exploring. So it would be very difficult now to provide uh, further details and specifics in relation to that. It would also be very dependent on uh, the budgetary allocation um, to, to our department as well. Um, as I indicated, due to our limited budget um, for us to pay for insurance or uh, stipends for every neighborhood watch member is just something that unfortunately we cannot afford. But um, maybe something that we should be exploring is uh, perhaps a partnership between neighborhood watches and the private sector. Uh, to see if the private sector, um, you know, would be open to supporting some of these neighborhood watch, uh, watches in, in dire uh, need. Because as Minister has alluded to, we, we do know it is very often the poorest of the poor that are volunteering to make their areas safer. We also saw it with the potential uh, unrest and looting where uh, community members came out in numbers to protect uh, the businesses in the area, and maybe it is something we need to explore that those businesses actually uh, give back uh, towards um, that as well. Um, th uh, thank you, Honorable Chair. I'm not sure if any of my colleagues would like to add um, anything at this point, anything more? Thank you, thank you so Chair. much, HOD and Minister. Members, um, that concludes that concludes members' interaction and discussion in terms of vote number four. I will now request if there's any member of the public. I see member letter, your hand just went up. I will note you. Member Lecker, we have tabled the entire vote. Um, is there any specific question that you would have? 
Yes, thank you, Chair. I would like to, to get an understanding in respect to, to, to the Chrysalis Academy. Um, in, in, in light of the numbers that had to be reduced um, due to COVID, is there maybe any preparations in ensuring that um, the department um, reaches its target in, in the near future? Because as you would know, um, the, there are targets that are set as to by a particular date, so many numbers um, or so many young people would have been recruited. Um, but also the, the, the last one that I would like to ask is in respect to um, how the, the Chrysalis graduates that are placed um, in the foyer of the building where we are situated um, there has been an indication that there has been some late payments or some have not been paid. Um, is there any attention that is being given in that regard? Thank you. Thank you so much, Member um, Lekker. I do know your first question. We touched on it um, during our initial engagement, but I will allow the department and the minister to answer and then we will conclude by opening up to any member of the public. But welcome and thank you so much, Member Lekker, for your Just one last thing, Chair. Sorry, man. Um, I, I know that I'm an um, alternate member in this committee, but at the moment I'm standing in for Member Gamma. Okay, that will be, that's duly noted. We appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for thank being you, here. Thank you so much, uh, Minister and HOD. Um, directly you. after your input and answering, we will then um, open up to any member of the public that wishes to pose a question and thereafter direct for your closing remarks. So over to you. Thank you. Thank you. I will. Okay, man. Back to the chair. But I just want to say, with after COVID, what we, what every department did was to really look at their um, targets. You, you can't. This is just impossible to continue with unrealistic targets when you when you know. Uh, the, the consequences could be people being infected. And so in, in all cases, people adjusted their targets, but I asked the HOD to speak to that. And I, I'm sure they will also explain something about the payment. Thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. And thanks, Honorable Lecker, for the question. Uh, thank you, Minister. Um, yes, as Minister has alluded to, in terms of uh, the pandemic, unfortunately, we could not... Uh, place the uh, chrysalis um, um, students, if I can call them as such, at risk. Uh, we had to comply with disaster management regulations, the protocols, the, the uh, social distancing, et cetera, which resulted in us being unable to continue with the, to host the numbers as originally planned. So um, I think, the, uh, whether we would be able to make up the numbers and perhaps run um, an extra cohort, uh, that would depend uh, solely on, on the fourth wave and um, the disaster management regulations. But paramount for us would be the safety of uh, the chrysalis um, um, students that are at the training. So we are always guided uh, by that. It's obviously unfortunate we would have uh, really wanted to overachieve on the, on the numbers, uh, but unfortunately unable to, um, to do so. So um, if um, the fourth wave passes and if we can uh, run an additional cohort in consultation with Chrysalis to make up the original uh, target, we will definitely do so because there are so many youth in the province that are in need of a program of that nature. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the uh, payments, um, they, they, um, there were some uh, challenges in relation to um, our uh, financial uh, system, but I trust that all the Chrysalis graduates have received uh, their payments uh, since that uh, then uh, member lecker. Uh, but uh, I will, um, if any of the other colleagues would like to share any further insight uh, in relation to the payments, um, they're welcome to respond. As soon as we are alerted to any uh, delay in payments, we 
uh, communicate with the Chrysalis graduates and the Chrysalis management timelessly to indicate that there is a challenge and that the payments uh, will be uh, slightly delayed. And then we endeavor to pay then as soon as uh, possible thereafter. Thank you, Chair. I'm not sure if any of the other colleagues would like to add. Uh, Chairperson, uh, Fred Watkins, if I may just add something on the payments of those specific members that work at 7 Well Street. Um, as soon as we were notified, we actually had a look at them and they were actually paid before we received the complaint. They were paid on the 24th of November. But nevertheless, um, after that, we did go into discussions with our CFO and um, their payments and all the other payments. There's a process being developed, uh, so it has been prioritized within the department. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much to the Minister, the HOD and officials for answering our questions from the members. Is there any person from the public that is in our meeting that wishes to pose any question? Meetings in terms of appropriations are considered public hearings. Just to double check, Mr. Matthews, we have not received any requests as well. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. There have been no requests by members of the public and a quick browse of the list of attendees. It seems like it's just members and officials in the meeting. Thank you so much. On that note, I will now afford the Minister and the HOD any closing remarks. Uh, just want to say thank you to the Chair and Committee for always affording us an opportunity to come and where you actually look at and analyze the budget. And I think uh, I really appreciate and I think all of us appreciate the, um, you know, the absolute um, concern and sincerity of members asking very pertinent questions around uh, rural, rural issues and rural safety, also issues around um, the well-being of our neighborhood watches. And I really think we take it very seriously. We have a team of officials who's really very serious about addressing all those questions and making sure that the dignity of all our people, everyone in this province, that it's um, been protected and afforded and promoted. Um, so the non-payment of a person may affect people's real um, hunger issues. We, I tell you, they re responded with absolute speed to correct those kind of um, issues um, that we that may come up. So I also want to say thank you to all our officials who are moving into a festive season, and it may be quite a hectic festive season. I just want to say to them, um, Chair, if you allow me to thank my officials for the amazing work that they are all doing. Um, and I think we can just build on this moving forward. We can just build on really making a difference. We have seen the crime um, kind of stats, of, uh, absolute, a reduction in that. Um, <clears throat> all our role players are liquor authority, the Western Cape Liquor Authority, the liquor board. Um, you know, all of them are contributing to this big picture of the dome and the safety dome, dome that we want every single citizen in this province to be protected and to feel safe and to feel they can value their freedom in this province. Thank you very much, Chairperson. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Minister HOD. Uh, thank you very much, Honourable Chair. I just also um, want to thank the, the members for their input and their support. Uh, we, we value um, you know, all, all the comments being made um, and it encourages us to try harder and, and work harder um, you know, towards creating um, a safer Western Cape, especially for the vulnerable persons of this province. Uh, but then also just to mention that um, we are very proud as, as a department um, to achieve our 13th consecutive uh, clean audit outcome. And from my side, I just would like to thank uh, the minister for his leadership and support, as well as uh, to the uh, departmental personnel as, as well. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Minister HOD and all the officials, the CEO of the Western Cape Liquor Authority. Your presence is highly appreciated. 
we are grateful as a committee and we will continue in our role in engaging with you and the department. So we are delighted and we wish you a safe um, evening and festive season ahead. Thank you so much. You are now you, duly thank excused. You, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Much appreciated. Member Lekka, thank you so much for your attendance here today. I just want to double check today. Um, you have earlier indicated that you are standing in for Member Kama. So that we can just get it on the record. Correct, Chair. Thank you so much. Members, in terms of our committee resolutions, requests for information and recommendations, uh, which we can add into our minutes, is there any recommendations or resolutions that you have at this stage? Chair, Member Boyton, um, I just like... Perfect. Um, Mr. Matthews, were you able to capture that one? Yes, Chairperson. Thank you so much. Member Lekker. Thank you, Chair. Mine is just to, to check with the department um, as to if there is any progress in relation to the rezoning um, of um, certain areas where it comes to applying for liquor license. Um, if I remember quite um, well, there was an indication earlier that um, the city of Cape Town as well as the department would be meeting um, so that uh, the issue of rezoning can be looked into. Can we just get an update in that regard? Thank you. That's perfectly fine. Thank you so much. Members, um, any other member? <clears throat> On that note, it is now 14.07. And I will allow our procedural officer a couple of moments to flight the relevant report with specific details to vote for community safety in the schedule of the Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill. I will now get an indication from any member regarding our stance on our deliberations here today. I see Member Bota. Chair, I propose for this committee to support this vote. Thank you so much, Member Bota. Member Lekker, I see your hand. And then Member Bosman. Thank you, Chair. The African National Congress would like to um, choose a minority vote and not to support the, the, the budget. Thank you. Thank you so much, Member Lekker. Member Bosman? Chair, I wanted to second Member Boeta's proposal because it was a good one. Thank you so much. Members, based on the submissions that were made and the permanent members present here today, um, I wish to further support the recommendation from Members Boeta and Bosman as well. Based on that, the report is flighted and I will read the relevant report into the record that the Standing Committee on Community Safety, Cultural Affairs and Sport, having deliberated on the subject of vote for community safety in the schedule of the Western Cape Adjustments Appropriation Bill B6 of 2021, refer to the committee in terms of Standing Rule 188, reports that it supports the vote in accordance with Standing Rule 90, the African National Congress expresses its minority view to not support the vote. Members, I trust that you find that in order. The report will be duly signed, and that brings us to the end of adopting that report. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Members, with six additional minutes, um, I do want to ask your indulgence that we have one set of um, two sets of minutes and a report that we need to adopt. Would members be okay with that? So that we can get our administration done for the year. Chair, the absence, yeah. Should we not have adopted the report? 
Um, yes, um, the report was duly adopted. Did okay. I miss something? So sorry. Okay. We supported you the did report. Not, you, you did not ask for a proposal and a seconder to adopt the report. My my bad. Now it looks like I really I visited to the Dicker Authority. I um, propose to adopt. Thank you I so much, that. Member Bota and Member Bosman. Members, on that note, the report is then duly adopted. Member Bota uh, moved that we adopt and Member Bosman seconded, but we have noted the African National Congress in terms of Rule 90, their minority view. Thank you so much for the reminder, Member Bota and Member Bosman. Members, we are now dealing with a set of minutes. It is being flighted. If you are able to check your attendance, We have requested information. Do I have any member moving that we adopt? I see member Bosman, member Bota. I move that we adopt the minutes, Chair. Thank you so much. I support that um, proposal. Thank you so much. We will go to our second. Wednesday, 10, 10 November. <coughs> it was our engagement with the city of Cape Town. Member Bota. Thank, thank you, Chair. I'm not able to adopt neither to support the adoption. Thank you so much. Do I, um, Member Bosman? Chair, I propose that we adopt the minute. Thank you so much. That will then be seconded by me if need be. Um, second by me. Is one. Second by me. It's fine. Oh, seconded. Thank you so much, Member Christians. Mr. Matthews, do we have one additional report before we conclude? Uh, Chair, it's just a corresponding uh, report of the uh, Metro Police and then uh, the set of minutes on the 12th of November. Thank you so much. This is the relevant report as indicated by our procedural officer. Member Bosman. Thank you, Member Bosman. I note you. Sorry, Chairperson. I, I spoke while I was on mute. Um, I was saying that I propose that we adopt the report. Baya Baya Danke. Do I see Member Christians? Second that, uh, Chair. Baya Baya Danke. Members, as per our discussions and deliberations in terms of the liquor authority, do I see any member moving that we adopt? Member Bosman? I move that we adopt, uh, Chairperson. Thank you so much. I will then duly second. Mr. Matthews, thank you so much. Bye bye, Danke. On that note, I trust that we have concluded all committee business. We have duly adopted um, our position on the relevant vote, number four, community safety. And I wish members all of the best for the rest of this evening and this week as we continue to engage um, here in the Western Cape during 
various engagements, uh, parliamentary set, um, sittings and budget votes. But baie, baie dankie, thank you so much. And to each and every member, it is works waarderend. Baie, baie dankie. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you so much. And I'm still not going to any liquor authority premises now. But baie dankie. Thank Lika you very much, everybody. <laughs> Chair, you do know that you don't have to go to a liquor.